Today we are going to discuss about a little bit about, about uh, the possibility to invert the kinematics at the differential level by means of a proper algorithms. So it will be, I mean, the first uh, uh, control design that we will do in uh, in this class. Okay. So let us let us recap a little bit uh, where we are. We defined uh, the geometric and the analytical Jacobian. Those are uh, two matrices that allows us to represent the relationship between the joint velocities and the end effector velocity. In particular, the geometric Jacobian uh, is uh, related to the linear and angular velocity, while the analytical Jacobian is exactly the same for the pos positional part, but for the um, uh, orientational part, the relationship is not with respect to the angular velocity, but with respect to the time derivative of the orientation representation. And this makes uh, a big difference in the physical interpretation of uh, the end effect, or the movement of the end effect. Then uh, we defined uh, the kinematic singularities, and we discovered actually what a kinematic singularity is, in short, uh, is a configuration at which the Jacobian loses rank. And we gave interpretation as, for example, the, the configurations in which the robot is losing mobility. We repeated some uh, mathematical concept that will be useful today. And then we will we started discussing, uh, discussing about how can I invert this relationship uh, V equal Jacobian multiplied by uh, Q dot. And we saw that in the end, we have to invert somehow the Jacobian, okay? So this is a more or less an in a inversion of a matrix. We saw a little bit what the redundancy he is, and today we are going to discuss about, well, in the end today, we are going to design controllers, kind of controller, not the only one that you will see in this class. But before starting with the, the algorithms, we need to not to study because, I mean, we will not study, we will just see another uh, mathematical tool that we will use to design a controller. And uh, I prepared only uh, a couple of, uh, of uh, three pages in order to just get the, 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 the important concept of this without uh, too much mathematical details. Let us consider a generic, uh, a generic uh, dynamic system uh, where x is uh, a variable denoting the state of this dynamic system. Uh, a very famous uh, stability uh, theorem is the uh, Lyapunov uh, stability. The name Lyapunov uh, is not new for the students uh, of uh, Theoria dei Sistemi, but this theorem uh, I think is different from the one that we saw last year. This is in its, uh, in its basic uh, formulation. There are a lot of uh, a family of, theorem, of theorems uh, based on this one. Let us consider the, the, the simplest one. This is a dynamic system, and I want to verify its stability. It means that I want to see if I, with respect to the origin, okay? So it means that uh, I want to see if I, um, uh, if I change a little bit its position, if it will come back to the region, or if it will stay in a closed bound of the region, or eventually if it will uh, diverge to infinity. But this is a nonlinear function. It means that we cannot use the instruments that we used last year in Teoria dei Sistemi. 
so in, in linear system theory because of course i mean we don't have a, a dynamic matrix or eigenvalues to look for okay to look at so we try to build the scalar function function of the state now continuously differentiable let me just say should be smooth enough okay without these continuities should be continuous and the first and the first derivative should be continuous this it means smooth enough now this function i build a function that is always positive for any x different from zero and is equal zero only in the origin now this is a scalar so i don't say positive definite as for matrices because it's positive it's a scalar if i can demonstrate that the time derivative of this function is always uh, uh, less or equal zero so not increasing then the conclusion is that the origin is stable so the my my state stays the evolution stays around a bounded uh, set containing the origin however if i can demonstrate that this is strictly decreasing then the origin is asymptotically stable asymptotically means that the x at infinity goes to zero if also let us uh, ignore this for the moment what is important is okay i build a fun a positive function if i demonstrate that its time derivative is non-increasing or decreasing i do have the information that i need to take some conclusion about the, its stability from the intuitive point is not difficult and we can also try to visualize this function v of course here the only limit is the fantasy but uh, in our case uh, pragmatically we will consider function uh, similar to this one so uh, this is a function uh, uh, a potential function v a Lyapunov function where uh, in the horizontal plane here i have the state x1 x2 and uh, in the y-axis i have uh, v so the graphical representation is only possible with the uh, state of dimension two otherwise you have to use your imagination and this is a, a function that is always uh, uh, positive if i can demonstrate that its time derivative uh, is negative well it means that uh, we can visualize the state uh, as sliding back to the origin okay so this is a, a graphical representation that helps us in understanding uh, the core of the theorem okay this is true for a, a generic uh, uh, dynamic system but now i'm interested in uh, uh, robotics so let us uh, try to implement this in robotics first of all uh, sorry first of all my function will be most of the time a, a quadratic form of this kind so x transpose x that we already met not only in the mathematical uh, recap but in several other places for example also in the kalman filtering or i can have uh, a weighted uh, formulation that is the same where k is a positive definite symmetric matrix that i can select or i can have uh, one over two just to have round numbers to work with but the point is uh, when i work with the uh, liapunov theorem in robotics most of the time i start i mean in its uh, at least at the level of uh, of um, uh, a master master course uh, most of the time i do start with a Lyapunov function of this structure now the time derivative of this function is basically 2x transpose x dot okay i do remember the the rules of the time derivative for for the product of vectors 
it means that V dot is equal to X transpose X dot. I do know that uh, X dot uh, is, uh, well, the dynamics. Now, here, the design of the controller enters into, the, into play, and we will do it once today, and also another time when we will work in, uh, in, uh, in dynamic control for robots. Because now, I do have this expression to play with. It means that uh, I have an input that I can select in order to impose to this function to be negative. If I'm able to do it, well, I design a controller using a theorem of stability. Okay, so this is the main concept. Now, who is uh, X in our case? Well, X, for example, is, a, is the error. I want to, to bring the state to, to zero. What is the state? Well the error so i want to bring the error to zero okay and we will do it later on if i make the time derivative of q tilde the vector q dot appears in the in the equation and this will be used as input what does it mean that uh, i can use q dot as input let us let us first look at this, uh, at this uh, block diagram below, okay? Now, what are we going to do today? Today, we are going to develop inverse kinematics <coughs> algorithms that are also defined kinematic controllers. It means that uh, I will develop something that we receive as input, the desired end effect of trajectory, and will provide in output the desired joint position or velocity. We'll, we'll discover it more or less, let's say. And we will assume that this block here, with a strange acronym that means low level controller, is perfect and uh, it will follow my desired joint position with zero error. This is the assumption that we are going to do today. It's not a, let me say, a very strong assumption. This kind of separation of the control in two loops, kinematic and dynamic controller, is uh, quite common. I first decompose my control problem from the end effector to the joint. And then at the joint level, I follow the desired trajectory. Okay, this is what we are going to do today. For the moment, we will assume that the second loop is perfect. So, in a sense, we will assume that there is not second loop because Q will be equal Q desired at each sampling time. Then, for the students of uh, uh, Engineering Informatica, we will also study several controllers for specifically for uh, the robots, okay? For the low level control. For the students of Mechanical Engineering, we will not arrive up to that level because the two course, one is five uh, uh, credits and the other is nine. So that's, uh, we will stop um, before arriving to that topic. This is the meaning of the today, today's design of controller. We are going to develop this orange block here. Now, the point is, why do I need algorithms? If I know that uh, I'm able to make the inverse kinematics that if, uh, we, we did it last time, well, just as a reminder, in, our, in case you are not convinced, this is what we have done last week in case of a square control problem. Okay, just the inverse of the Jacobian multiplied by the end effector velocity is Q dot. 
So I'm, I'm able to invert the relationship without problem. I can make a discretization and just say, okay, but the joint position is simply the integral of this one with a certain sampling time. However, and we will see later today in some example, this implies a drift in the solution, means that uh, I will accumulate a certain error at the end effect. Because as we know since last year, no, the integral of uh, uh, a noisy velocity is not the position, and discretization is a kind of noise. So when we do integrate velocity, we don't have positions. We have something that deviates from the position. We need to close the loop. We need to design feedback controllers. Okay? And this is what we are going to do today. And we'll see several different controllers, uh, more or less uh, all related to the same family. So, and we will uh, uh, play a lot in the practice with those controllers. Okay, so let us start. What is our problem? I do have uh, the desired X, position and orientation of the end effect. Someone say, okay, you have to bring this model from here and put it here. So the X desired is something that I know. I know the time law and everything. I define a so-called operational space error. So the error in the operational space, in the Cartesian space, and this is simply a vector. I want to compute its dynamics. As I told you, the word dynamics can have a couple of uh, slightly different meanings, but sometimes for us is uh, no, that it's time derivative. So I want to compute its time derivative. E dot is equal, well, x dot uh, plus, uh, uh, sorry, x dot, uh, x desired dot minus end effect or uh, position, uh, the, the time derivative of the end effect or configuration. X desired dot is whatever, because it is an input from the user. Okay, it's the movement that I require to the end effect. And this is something that we already defined, because this is exactly J Q dot. Just pay attention. It is the analytical Jacobian because I'm making the time derivative of the configuration. So we will start by using analytical Jacobian. And we will use geometric Jacobian later today. And we will see the difference because the orientation is always the, let me say, our nightmare. Now, our control problem is find Q dot such as the error goes to zero, the error in the Cartesian space. Basically, this is my end effector. I'm asking to move in a segment, okay? I need to find an algorithm that uh, provides the joint velocities that makes, that implements this movement, okay? We already know how to do it because we know that uh, Okay, I need simply to invert the Jacobian, but as I told you, I cannot then simply integrate this Q dot. So I need to close the loop somehow. And this will be done by using somehow the error, okay? This is the first algorithm in the simplest version. Let us consider a square problem. As I told you, and I will uh, repeat several times, we, sh we can uh, um, try to, uh, to, to imagine our problem by uh, visualizing the simplest uh, robotic structure that, I mean, exhibits the properties that we need. For example, 
let us consider a planner to link if I'm only interested in a position or a planner three link if I'm interested in a position and of course orientation only one. Let us consider, try to visualize only the, always the simplest structure. Most of the time it is enough to understand the concept. Okay, so Q dot is equal, the inverse of the analytical Jacobian multiplied x dot desired and this is something that we know because it's something that we saw last time the novel aspect is given by the feedback so x desired dot plus k e let's see why i mean this is a a control law that that provides this equation for the error. Uh, no. uh, just a moment because I I need to up to upload the um, the page. Okay, so you can see the um, the page. So let us let us verify that this is exactly what we are looking for. I do know that uh, x dot e is equal j anal analytical Jacobian multiplied by q dot. Okay. So now I substitute Q dot with uh, its uh, expression here. And I do have uh, Okay. Under assumption of a full rank of the matrix otherwise i cannot compute the the velocity it means that uh, i'm in a singular configuration i have that this is equal to x dot e equal x dot the side plus k e but then uh, I can easily see that I can bring this one here and I have uh, exactly E dot, okay? So this is uh, implies that E dot plus K E equals zero. Now let me put the dimension uh, let me stress the dimension of those variables because e is a vector and k is a matrix is a gain matrix we select k we select k as a symmetric a positive definite but let me say that we select k as a, a dia diagonal matrix in order to simplify our life a diagonal matrix 
And actually, what we do is, uh, so the dimension of this uh, matrix is uh, lambda one, uh, okay, K1, uh, Kn. It, it means that the evolution of the error is E K T e in zero. Is the matrix exponential where the dynamic matrix is K, actually it's minus K, uh, is minus K. It means that I'm uh, assigning the constant time the inverse of the constant time in the gain k of the evolution of the error. So k decided how fast the error goes to zero. And this is a design parameter. It's under the choice of the, uh, the designer. Now, Of course, we will see it in simulation, in numerical simulation. Uh, this is a continuous time uh, relationship, and then we are going to discretize it. So K cannot be selected as plus infinity, because when I make the discretization, I know that I need to, 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 have, to reach a compromise with uh, uh, the sampling time. But we will see it in, in, in our uh, numerical simulation. So what is important is to understand the role of this one. So this solution is given by, well, a open loop solution. I simply say, if this is your desired velocity at the end effector, you just have to implement the inverse mapping plus a closed loop contribution. Okay. We can also visualize this uh, controller in uh, a block diagram, which, if I use Simulink, uh, is uh, already a kind of a pseudo code. We are going to use MATLAB, so we are not going to use it. But uh, this is useful to understand a little bit the relationship. So I have uh, Q dot given there is this q dot here the fact that i'm assuming uh, a perfect low level controller means that i can say okay this is already the real q so simply put an integrator i feed by q with the direct kinematics here so then uh, here there is a nonlinear block that computes the end effector configuration here the error composition, control gain, plus the feed forward term, and this is my uh, inverse of the Jacobi. Okay, this, uh, uh, this arrow here means uh, that I do need the current Q in order to compute this uh, matrix, okay, because this needs to be computed at each sampling time, of course, because it's configuration dependent. <clears throat> From the mathematical aspect, we achieved a so-called linearization of the error dynamics. The error is now represented, the error dynamics is represented by a uh, differential linear equation. The simplest differential equation that we can find is this one. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, the simplest uh, algorithm that we can find. However, if I want to, to generalize it for redundant robot, I already know they try to make very small, I mean, difference from the mathematical aspect with respect to the previous one. The differences are, okay, for a redundant robot, I mean, the inverse of the Jacobian is, not, is simply not defined because now my Jacobian 
has more line, more uh, columns than rows. Okay, so it's a low rectangular. I do know that in such a case, I can use the pseudo inverse and uh, simply use the pseudo inverse here. We instead of the inverse with the same uh, uh, multiplied by the same term. In addition to that, I do know that I can exploit the redundancy by using an arbitrary velocity vector projected within the null space. We already saw this component. This is something that you are going to use in a numerical simulation. And we can verify easily that this is uh, a proper controller in the sense that the error goes to zero as well. In order to verify it, let, uh, let, me, let me take this equation here and left multiply by j a by j a uh, all the equation okay what i do have is that uh, here this is uh, x dot a Equal, well, then I have uh, JA multiplied by J pseudo inverse, and this gives the identity. Here I have dot plus KA plus, if I multiply JA E minus JA pseudo inverse JA. Q dot A, I can uh, recognize that this here provides zero. So this term here disappears. In the end, uh, I'm still uh, having the same as before. So X dot A is equal X dot desired plus Okay, I, I simply made the first, uh, the first multiplication here, return j, because multiplied by the identity, minus, then I have this one that provide the identity, and so I have j minus j equals zero, okay? And this is the meaning of null space projector. I mean, this uh, matrix is made on purpose. It means exactly that G, uh, Q dot A uh, provide internal motion that do not affect the end effect of motion. Now, in the previous page, we saw the uh, block diagram of the controller. Now, let us see the pseudocode. Pseudocode pseudo -code is very simple, okay? <clears throat> Of course, this is pseudo code. It means that it's, <laughs> it's not working. Uh, this is not the correct syntax. So the pseudo code is in each same in each uh, um, sampling time. I need first to compute uh, the current and the factor configuration. Then the error x desired is an input. So I do know x desired. Somehow there is a, a function or comes from the input from uh, a file, whatever, but I do know x desired. I compute the current Jacobian, analytical Jacobian. I should have uh, a proper function to compute the analytical Jacobian. This is a pseudocode because what we have done yesterday was to compute the geometric Jacobian, okay? So only pseudocode. Then I compute the Q desired, the Q dot, as a pseudo inverse of J con A multiplied by this term here. 
Okay, we, without the noon space. This is a pseudo code for only the, the first part. And then I need to integrate to desired. This is a, a, a C like syntax, but basically it's a, a discrete time integration of the Q desired. So this is the pseudo code of my code. It's very compact and very simple. Of course, as long as uh, I trust the forward kinematic function and I trust the Jacobian function. Okay, this should be uh, free from any kind of possible errors. Okay, uh, let let just see if just a small move in. In fact, okay, this is right here. is very is very um, it's very stupid this video i need to 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 change it to substitute with some someone else i have an end effector position orientation uh, uh, desired for this seven link robot is a kuka lightweight robot and now the the the, the software uh, color in red the eventual joint that reaches a mechanical limit. And for example, in this case, this joint here reached the mechanical limit. So it's a, just a numerical simulation made uh, before the, the, uh, the experiment. The argument implemented here is uh, the argument in this version without uh, the exploitation of the redundancy. I just uh, make the pseudo inverse actually not me that was uh, a a student of a colleague uh, i just uh, imp i just implement this one without any uh, exploiting of the redundancy then i run i run it again by adding also this this term where q dot a has been selected uh, in one of the way in one of the way that we uh, saw in particular in order to try to stay away from the mechanical joint limit. And basically, now the end effector makes the same. This stay stays a little bit up and uh, is not red colored. OK, is it funny, but uh, it's not very uh, meaningful as a, as a video. I will uh, uh, substitute with something a little bit uh, more interesting later on. OK. Now. May I avoid uh, to invert the, um, the Jacobian? Because inversion of the Jacobian is a dangerous situation, a dangerous operation, also pseudo inversion as well. It means that uh, I'm making a division. And in case I'm close to a singular configuration, uh, a kinematic uh, conf uh, singularity, uh, I know that this is dangerous. This may be uh, dangerous because I can have a numerical issue. Exactly at the singular configuration, I experience a division by zero issue. But I never or seldom reach the singular configuration because close to the singular configuration, I know that the inversion of a matrix is similar to make the division by a small number, epsilon close to zero. And so I have a huge uh, results, huge numbers that provide numerical issue. In, so in this case, huge joint velocities that cannot be followed by the motors, OK? In practice, uh, I, I do not encounter the uh, numerical issue of MATLAB, I first encounter the physical limit of Q dot. And I'm, I always have some hardware protection on the joint if I'm asking something that is not physically following by the motor, there are always some kind of hardware protection that uh, intervene. Okay. So before the numerical issue, there is the, the physical limitation of the robot. Okay, let me try to avoid Jacobian inversion. Actually, it is possible to try to do something in, pra in practical using the transpose of the Jacobian. 
I defined a, a, a tentative Lyapunov function as this one. So it's a, a quadratic form of the error, as usual. But K now is a, a design uh, matrix. So it's something that I can decide. As long as a positive, definite, and uh, uh, symmetric. Okay, let's see how to use this theorem in order to design a controller. Uh, the assumption for the function are satisfied because quadratic forms are always positive as long as uh, the input uh, is different from zero and uh, zero in the origin. Okay, so by construction, because I decide I selected a, a quadratic form. Okay, let us make a time derivative of this, this uh, uh, quadratic form. The time derivative is uh, uh, two, it transpose k e dot. Okay, so it's uh, the, 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 the time derivative of uh, uh, a polynomial function. So uh, I can write it x, x transpose k, so two multiplied by uh, half, so they just simplify one each other. So I can write e dot as uh, x dot minus x dot e. And now I can substitute x dot e with x expression uh, jq dot, okay? I've done anything but just the computation of the time derivative. Now, okay, ni nice. I can design now a controller by using q dot as an input, okay? And uh, I can do it in order to impose v dot to be negative. Now, a stability theorem can be used as a, a control design method. Say, okay, q dot is in your hands. You can select q dot. And I try to use q dot as a, the, the 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 blue square here instead of the inverse of uh, the jacobian i try with the transpose of the jacobian what happened is that uh, this is what i i obtain and i can i can try to to understand this function. Okay, so this is the function that I reached with my, with my, uh, by imposing q dot equal to this part here. Now we should be able to discuss about if this, uh, if this function is uh, positive or negative. Okay. Now, I have a first term here, which is uh, in, is undefined. I cannot uh, find any uh, any property related to its sign. Could be whatever. Okay. The fact that k is positive definite is not of help because it's positive definite in a quadratic form is okay, but here I have a e transpose multiplied by x dot desired. I cannot find any property with respect to the sign of this term. Could be whatever, okay? However, if I look at this one,
Now, this is a quadratic form where you can not notice that here J A transpose K A is multiplied by its transpose. This is something like uh, E transpose M transpose M E. Still is a quadratic form. However, the Jacobian is not necessary for rank. So it kind of, kind of, uh, uh, of uh, strange. We need to, to, to make some uh, additional consideration. And the consideration are those one. First, uh, let us assume that I provide a regulation problem it means uh, x desired equal constant x dot desired equal zero okay so here is a combined by obviously x desired equal constant obviously because x dot desired equal zero so it means x desired equal constant. if uh, the jacobian is full rank well it's done because I demonstrated that V dot is uh, negative because this term here disappear because X dot desired equal zero and here I have a negative term everything is nice however the Jacobian changes during the movement I cannot be sure about its full rank so let us see what's happening if J A transpose is not full rank. Well, it can arrive that something very unpleasant happens. And I do remind what is the new space. The new space means that A X equal zero with uh, x uh, different from zero, okay? x belong to the null space of A in case this is true. We remember this uh, property of matrices. So now this can arrive with uh, the vector Ke. If it belongs to the null space of this matrix, this is zero, but with k e different from zero so it means that my robot gets stuck in a certain configuration now mathematically is a little bit abstract next page we will see a configuration where this algorithm gets stuck and never go out however what does it mean that the null space is different from zero that J loses rank. So I'm in a kinematic singularity. The point is, okay, with the transpose of the Jacobian, I was very happy because I said, okay, I have, I'm avoiding the inverse of the Jacobian. And uh, I will uh, overcome the problems uh, with the, um, with the um, kinematic singularities. No, this is not true because the kinematic singularity is a physical issue, it's not a mathematical one. I just uh, put it out from the door and came back from the window, the problem. And we will see next slide a possibility. If I'm using uh, x dot desire different from zero, well, it can be still, I can still use this uh, this algorithm and i can prove that the error is limited during the movement this can be proven we will not do the the the, the proof here but it can be used as well just to 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 tell you that uh, it's not a very strong limitation what is the pseudo code for the transpose of the for this argument if you have a look at the pseudo code 
there is only one difference with respect to the previous pseudocodes. And the only difference is uh, here. Everything is the same. It means that uh, we are going to use in, uh, in our exercise both the algorithms because uh, when uh, we have the code, uh, the change from one to the other is really minimal. Okay, but can I visualize the configuration in which I do experience problem with actually with both the algorithms, not only with uh, this one. Yes, I can visualize it. I can try to visualize it. Do you remember the kinematic singularity for uh, this structure? This is uh, uh, the, 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 the anthropomorphic uh, robot, the first three link of the anthropomorphic robot. I do remember that, uh, oh, sorry. I do remember that, okay, if the end effector lies on this, well, is a line, but for us is a segment, I cannot achieve the velocity going out from the plane of uh, joint two and three. This is a physical limitation of the robots. It cannot be solved algorithmically, but of course uh, we should, uh, we should uh, uh, meet issues if I try to go in a direction where the robot physically cannot go. And the issue is that uh, the robot here gets stuck because my algorithm say you dot, is equal J transpose K he. If uh, K he belongs to the null space of uh, J uh, transpose, it means that this is equal zero. So here I just stop if I want to go out from the, the plane. And if I were using uh, the other, so q dot a equal j minus one this is uh, a uh, division by zero issue kinematic singularities are bad and they cannot be solved algorithmically they can be handled algorithmically because we work with robot and close to the kinematic singularities or also within a kinematic singularity but we should uh, know the kinematic singularity and we should uh, properly handle it and we cannot ask to the robot movement that are not physically com compatible with its structure and sometimes we don't know it okay it's not made on purpose of course Okay, we may, we, we will uh, make a small break because now we are moving to geometric Jacobian and the issue of the orientation. It is a little bit more subtle than the position. Okay, any, any question? <laughs> 